1-800-242-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 17th day of September. 2018 glad to have you with us hope you had a great weekend hope you spent some quality time with the family i saw you in church nodded as always tip the hat actually but seriously thanks for joining us today if you're returning welcome back if you're here for the first time a special welcome to you we're glad to have you with us and if you can't see the chart i have up s p 500 e mini futures go to our homepage, cfrn.net right hand side of the page click the big microphone follow the instructions you'll be registered in about 30 seconds and you'll be good through the end of the month you only register once per month after that you enjoy one click access every single day also while you're out and about youtube.com slash cfrn slash live Go there, bookmark that page. That's where our dual stream is. And if the go-to ever goes down, uh, you'll know where to go. 104. Let's have a look at a little bit of news. UK-based crypto card issuer Wirex is expanding its operations to North America. In August, the company was awarded 
a FinTrack and money service business registration by regulators in Canada where users can already take advantage of its wallet supporting several cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin Core, Litecoin, Ripple, and Ethereum. According to a blog post published recently, the company intends to next introduce traditional currency accounts and contactless Visa cards. Wirex Plastics allow their holders to convert and spend cryptocurrency just like fiat money, both in shops and online. Their users can also benefit from the platform's reward program, offering 0.5% cash back in BTC on all in-store purchases. Now, the Wirex team notes that Although the UK and the US are ahead in the rankings for traditional blockchain adoption, Canada leads the way when it comes to Ethereum technology implementation. They also point out that the country is currently second only to the US in terms of the number of operational Bitcoin ATMs, more than 600 across the country. And in other news, some Amazon employees are complaining again. My goodness. I'm starting to think there might be something to this. For Amazon's online sellers, a negative product review can be extremely damaging to businesses selling their products on the retail giant site. In order to quash bad feedback, some sellers are offering Amazon employees bribes to obtain bad reviewers email addresses or to erase the a negative review from the site entirely. Now this news was broken in a story by the Wall Street Journal uh, yesterday. According to the Wall Street Journal sources, this practice is especially common in China where small business owners sometimes pay Amazon employees around $300 for each bad review they take down. These services are reportedly overseen by brokers who use the Chinese messaging service WeChat to connect sellers with Amazon employees. Sellers can even contact brokers to get proprietary information on sales volume and data relating to shoppers' online spending habits in order to boost sales. Hmm. Amazon policies prohibit disclosing this information and the online retail giant has launched an internal investigation to determine which employees are violating the company's policies. In a statement to Business Insider, an Amazon spokesperson said that the company holds employees to a high ethical standard and that anyone violating these codes faces discipline including termination and potential legal and criminal penalties. In addition, they wrote, we have zero tolerance for abuse of our systems and if we find bad actors who have engaged in this behavior, we will take swift action against them, including terminating their selling accounts, deleting reviews, withholding funds, and taking legal action. Now, I've known for a long time that this review business was pretty important. I mean, you've heard me talk about um, my wife does review for sellers, reviews for sellers on Amazon. And they, the Amazon truck stops four or five times a day delivering packages from people, mostly in China, who would like a positive review for so they're, on one hand, they're giving away products to get a good review, and they're paying $300, um, paying $300 to get rid of a negative review. Amazing the amount of weight, because if you... If you go on Amazon and if you start looking at the products and if you start looking at the reviews, I mean, some products have 
hundreds upon hundreds of reviews. Hard to imagine that one negative review, negative review could carry so much weight, but apparently they figured out that it can. And I assume that a negative review would be the last one coming in, so it sits on top until something else comes in, perhaps good reviews, to push it down. Because if you're looking to, and I understand you want to buy a product, you've never used a product, it's a new product, is it any good? Well, let me read the reviews. I was always, in the past, hesitant to read the reviews because I figured they were just written by, you know, whoever owned the website. I realized today that these reviews are taken seriously and they are written, in most cases, I think, by real people. The motivation behind writing them, I don't, I'm not sure. But this is a, a whole new industry, the review industry, that spun off from the behemoth known as Amazon. I always wondered about that name, Amazon. I'm curious now. Define Amazon. Here's the definition of Amazon. A member of a legendary race of female warriors believed by the ancient Greeks to exist in Scythia near the Black Sea in modern Russia or elsewhere on the edge of the known world. Okay. The pause was because the lady was speaking <clears throat> in my headset. Amazon, a member of a legendary race of female warriors believed by the ancient Greeks to exist in Scythia near the Black Sea in modern Russia or elsewhere on the edge of the known world. Hmm. You buying that? Also a tall and strong or athletic woman. Okay. And a parrot. Typically green with a broad rounded tail found in Central and South America. Now I thought we might find something there but I, I, I don't feel like I found anything. Uh, the origin of the word late Middle English via Latin from the Greek Amazon explained by the Greeks as without a breast as if from referring to the fable that the Amazons cut off the right breast so as not to interfere with the use of a bow. Yeah. I don't want to go there. <clears throat> All right, so now we know. Okay, that's what it means. How did we not see this coming? Or better yet, how could we have seen this coming? I mean, it started out as an online bookstore. Oh, an online bookstore. Hmm. Okay. I know. I know how that works. <clears throat> Let's do this, this, and this, this, and this, and this. <clears throat> And so, we're going to go to the Wayback Machine. You ever been there? I think I took you there before. Way back. Way back. Okay, 1999. That's uh, almost 20 years ago, right? Half man. Almost. 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 Okay. So the first hit we pick up, we got three snapshots on January the 25th. 1999 loading 
1999 their website didn't even work okay so let's be fair and go later in the year oh it looks like things are starting to pop here redirect you to impatient sure well I guess when you're Amazon you can even control the internet all right let's make sure the Wayback machines are not broken let's jump forward 2004 we all remember that I'm not sure what the difference between a blue and a green is but we'll see if we get the crawl error Come on, I guess you can't click the blue. Maybe that's the difference. Hmm. Now is this unique to Amazon? <clears throat> oh, let's try 4.com. 2000. Here you go, the website. Very interesting. I don't have an answer or a reason or a solution or any such thing, but hey. We tried. I just wanted to see what the electronic bookstore looked like or the online bookstore looked like back in the day before it became um, probably one of the most talked about things companies entities forces powers changing of the guard reshaping the world in which we live topics uh, we hear about today so let's take a look at something we can all wrap our mind around and those are the numbers from around the world you guys ready here we go these are cash markets not the futures we start here in the u.s the dow is currently down 17 points the NASDAQ is down 62. S&P 500 is down 7. And the Russell 2000 is down 9. And the movers and shakers in that bunch would be the NASDAQ, which is down a little over half of 1%. Almost three, what is three quarters of 1%. And the Russell 2000 down a little over half of 1%. In the commodity basket, crude oil down 21 cents trading 68.78 last gold up six dollars and fifty cents trading 1207.60 last in the asian markets today at the close nikkei was up 273 points shanghai was down 29 and the hang sing down 353 points now that's over one and a quarter percent into the red <clears throat> for the Hang Seng. A little over one percent negative for the Shanghai, and almost one and a quarter percent positive for the Nikkei. And last but not least, here in the European markets, we see at the close the FTSE was down almost two points, the DAX was down twenty-seven points, and the CAC was down almost. Four. No movers, no shakers, and all red in Europe. Not a, not a deep red, but just a sort of a light shade of red. So there you have it. Mixed in Asia. Red in the UK. And here at home, it's still a red radio day. And Michael, so tell us about uh, the storm. Well, it came... It went, and, you know, earlier I texted you that it was just ugly outside. Well, the mm -hmm. sun actually came out for a few minutes. Um, first time I've seen that since uh, Thursday. Did you see a, a dove with an olive branch? I did not. Okay. I did not. Um, 
How uh, close did the did catastrophe come to where you guys are? It, it was just rain here, really. Just rain and wind. Not a lot of wind. No, not too bad. So are you like, are you south of where uh, all the, where the worst of it was? Or north or inland? or um, Northwest. North, you're northwest of where? North, right, yeah. North, okay. And so it hit the coast and then... What did it roll up the coast, or it actually just kind of stuck right on the coast for for a couple of days? It just got there and it was moving at two miles per hour, and the coast is about I don't know 175 miles away from me. So you got this and thing with 100 mile an hour winds, but it's it itself it's only moving at like two miles an hour. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Huh. Yeah, that's that's what caused all the damage. It just it just stayed there and you know as it went westward um, it it weakened once it got over the land then the winds went away but it was just rain and well the winds didn't absolutely go away but the winds for the most part went away but there's you know flash flood warnings in pretty much every county around me mm -hmm. and you know and there were floods in some of them not in not in this one as far as I know um, now I'm in Catawba County, but uh, yeah, it was you know, it was a slow-moving, destructive storm on the coast. Once it got over the land, it wasn't that bad, but it was still slow-moving. I mean, we were waiting forever for that thing to get here, and you know, then it got here, and all it did was rain. You know, it was windy. You know, some of my some of my deck furniture was blown around. And it wasn't that bad. You know, we've had worse storms than that. that you know, might have only lasted an hour or two, but but they were worse than that. And so we stuck it out though the whole time, and we were just waiting for it. Well, Amen. Answer to prayers yeah. that uh, that it came and went. Uh, yeah. How many how many fatalities were there total? Last I heard was six. I think. Yeah, there weren't too many, and it was, you know, there was, there's one that I think is questionable. Uh, you know, there was something last night I was watching on the news. This tree fell in, fell across this trailer and killed a baby that a mother was supposedly holding, and the mother doesn't have a scratch on her, and somehow the baby's dead. Mm. And, you know, so there's some questionable things that I think have happened. Um, but, you know, there was one guy that got electrocuted turning on his, uh, turning on his generator. Oh, no. He died. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. He had just bought a brand new one, I guess, and he took it outside in the rain and turned it on outside in the rain and got electrocuted. Um, he died. And, you know, actual storm deaths, I, I don't know how many there were, probably three, something like that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't too bad. You know, it was, and you know, the damage is pretty much all on the coast. It's all over there. Hmm. But well, I'm yeah, sure glad you, you made it through it, man. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm glad it. I'm glad it's gone. And now the season's not over. Is there anything else brewing offshore? Yeah, but it's gonna hit. Uh, it's gonna hit the Gulf. There's like two or three other hurricanes that are tropical storms that are that are turning up right now in the Gulf and heading toward land um, but yeah we'll see the season is not over here right so we'll see what else what else comes our way hmm. Hmm. all right well let's answer to prayer we were all praying for you guys so <clears throat> glad to Thank hear you. that appreciate that it uh and the mes estimated time they're giving it to to recover, rebuild. No, oh, I don't know. It de it depends on where you are, but they're you know they're asking Congress for more uh, more money. And, you know, was it declared uh, a state of emergency or? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, they had ninety miles of uh, of ninety five that shut down. Did Trump you know, come and visit? Yeah, I think he did. 
did he? I'm pretty sure he did. Yep. Um, but you know the main the main interstate that's running from from Florida to to Maine, um, I-95. That there was like 90 miles of that was shut down, and I-40, which runs the other way, that was shut down, and yeah, I don't know, a lot of places were underwater. Hmm. But, yeah, it's gone. It's going up north right now. Be up in Boston. <clears throat> but it's day. losing. <clears throat> but it's losing steam, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just going to be rain up there. That's all. So yeah, Apple's iOS plans. 12. Uh, on another note, iOS 12 comes out today for iPhones and iPads, and I guess you need special instructions on how to install it this time. I don't. I, my my machine won't run it. Uh, I don't know what's different about it. I still have. I have the six S E iPhone. That's what I have. Uh, I've got the. I'm, I think I've got a five or four. I don't know. It's on. It runs on three G. Apple's releasing its next big iPhone update today. It's called iOS twelve. Has a lot of new features. Seems more like a refinement over iOS 11, supposedly. Features include a new option called Screen Time that shows how long you've been using apps on your phone. If you're worried about using one too much, like Facebook, you can set a timer so that it won't open after a predetermined amount of usage in a single day. Apple also improved their notifications, allowing you to group them and dismiss them much quicker instead of flooding your lock screen with messages. Um, another new feature, Momoji, lets you create an animated digital version of yourself. It's a lot like Animoji, which were introduced in iOS 11 for the iPhone X and can mimic your facial expressions using the front-facing camera on your iPhone X. It's not supported by devices that don't have Face ID. A new measure app is included in the release. It lets you measure almost anything with your iPhone using the augmented reality feature in iOS. And this is pretty cool. The beta version wasn't a perfect replacement for a regular measuring tape, but it's good if you need a quick estimate when you're in a bind and don't have a real tape measure. Hmm. Siri's getting improvements too with new Siri shortcuts. It'll let you create custom commands for Siri if you want to use it to set a command to open the news app when you say check the news for example you could do that it's going to be faster which means your app should open quicker less lag time uh, group facetime which will let you hold a video call at the same time with multiple people okay oh it was delayed from the initial update it'll come out later and uh, that's it there really is no special instructions. <laughs> Open settings, tap general, tap software update. Oh, I wonder how much space that's yeah. going to take up. I don't know. The, my last phone that was that I that I broke. It, it although I deleted all all music, all video, all podcast, it still didn't have enough room to install iOS 11. So. Yeah. All right, you've got the screen up, so let me hit mute, and I'll let you get down to business. Okay. All right. It's going to be relatively quick anyway, because we didn't have a lot going on today. Okay. All right. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, the 17th day of September, 2018. Um, today... Well, first, if you have not taken a free trial, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Right over here where it says five-day free trial, click on apply.cfrn.net. Or you can scroll down to where it says free five-day trial. Or right here where it says use our proprietary indicators for free. Click on any one of them, and you will eventually be brought to this page. On this page, all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Click the submit button. Once you hit that submit button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. 
Okay, if you don't click that confirmation link, we don't know that you took the free trial. So you must click that confirmation link. Okay. Okay. Results. Today. Slow day. We were minus 8 in crude and plus 9 in gold. Put us at plus 10. So we had a yellow day today. That means we ended positive, but we did not get the gold for the day. We took six trading opportunities. On the month now, we're at $825. And on the year, we're at 24226 That is over 170 days, averaging 142 per day. That is one contract, two hours per day. One contract, two hours per day. Okay. Um, yeah, this month has been kind of slow. All right, on the gold, um, we started out, you see gold was kind of on a tear in the pre-market right here. And then the markets opened up and um, we needed to get a higher swing in here. Then it pulled back. It drew the cycle down. Then it went up. We had a break-even trade there, then a plus nine on this one, and another break-even right there. And then the markets just got sideways, right, during the break. They just went sideways. Um, the euro didn't have a single trade set up. It was a mess the whole day, the whole day. This is the Euro, the Z contract. Okay, um, crude oil, we had this opportunity right here. We didn't have anything leading up to that, right? There was no opportunity leading up to that. And then we got here, we had a short bounce off the BBC. It went up, stopped us out right away and then it went down and did what it should have done, put in a lower swing. Pulled back up, dragged the cycle up with it so we didn't have any opportunity until way over here. We had a short and we had a break even on that. Um, and there was nothing, nothing. And during the break, nothing, nothing. Um, looks like there might have been one shorting opportunity right here during the break. We're at the low of the day right now on crude. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. We're at the low of the day on crude right now. On the ES, we had first trade of the morning was this one right here. It was a break even. There was another one right here that would have been a break even that we missed. And that was it. That was it on the day. So it was this morning was really slow. Really, really slow. Um, so again, I'm going to show you the spreadsheet. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today, we lost eight ticks on crude. We made nine ticks on gold, so we're plus 10 bucks. Um, we didn't get the goal for the day, but we did end positive. Um, that makes it a yellow day. Three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so today was our 10th day of the month, and we're up $825 on the month. And... It's our 170th day of the year, and we're up $24,226 on the year. $24,226. Okay. If you have not taken a free trial, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Right over here on the right-hand side, it says five-day free trial. Apply.CFRN.net. You can click on that, or you can go down here to free five-day trial, or here. Use it indicators. Any one of those is eventually going to get you to this page where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit the submit button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, you don't get a free trial because we don't know you took the trial until you do that. All right. All right. With that, we can pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Studio A overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. See, these markets are just a mess in here. And check tomorrow's news events. Tomorrow. We don't have anything tomorrow either. Take long term purchases at 4 p.m. NHB Housing Market Index at 10 a.m. Wednesday.
building building permits, housing starts. Doggy speaking, 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Crude inventories. Yes, Dwayne. Yeah. If you are ready, you can take it back. Yeah, I didn't know if you had, I had stepped away for just a moment. Yeah. John? Um, not yet. There's a couple of Johns, but not the one you're looking for. Okay. And so, how was the recap? Uh, today we had a yellow day. We were plus 9 in gold and minus 8 in crude, so we were plus 10 on the day. Six on trading second. opportunities. Just one sec. Uh -huh. Yes, it was yellow. Does anybody have any questions for me while we wait for Dwayne to come back? Anyone? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, I was just checking with John. He's getting ready to pop in. Okay. okay. And I heard you asking if anyone had any questions. Did anyone have any? No, nobody has any questions okay. right now. Hello, Paul. Paul said, "Oh, that's when I said Amazon. Yeah, it is a it is a river. It's also a jungle. Yeah, it's a river. It's a jungle, and it's women who remove their right breast to accommodate a bow, so it doesn't get in the way. I guess that's unless you're left-handed, like me and Johnny Carson and Bill Clinton." Um, there's a motley crew. <clears throat> Johnny Carson. Left handed. So. I mean, Amazon. Who'd have thought? And, and now, and it all, you know, it seems like it happened so quick. But, you know, it really. It, it, on one hand, it seems like it was yesterday, but then if you actually look at a calendar, I mean, it's 20 years ago. That it actually started to I don't remember when they went public but I, I should know. take the screens yes I still have the charts and John still not in yeah, yeah. He, he's he's on his way he said so he'll be here a moment okay I don't know mean And anyone who had difficulties going to CFRN this morning, you shouldn't have any troubles now. They have been corrected, at least on my end. Maybe check in on your end, make sure, Michael. Yeah, it's okay on my end. Okay. Kudlow says the U.S. has the hottest economy in the world today. We're crushing it. I wish he hadn't have said that. <laughs> it's kind of like getting a picture on the cover of Sports Illustrated. It's usually not going to be a good year following that. <clears throat> and so last week, our highest weekly trading zone on the U contract, we're now in December, ESZ8. Weekly trading zones were created, of course, for the ESU8. But we learned long ago that come rollover day, we don't have to do anything or or change anything and the high of the week last week for the Z contract was just a couple points shy or I take that back three ticks shy of hitting the highest weekly trading zone 
there's last night's open we gapped a little bit lower on the open we went sideways forever and then notice notice this uh, wow did it yep to the tick okay see the close on Friday was 29.11 and a quarter and the high here 29.11 and a quarter now stocks gap up gap down all the time on a daily basis uh, futures you don't see too many gap opens or, or gap higher gap lower you don't see much of that <clears throat> because of the nature of futures and the fact that they trade practically around the clock uh, during earnings seasons you might see them and on a Sunday night after the markets actually been closed for a day now when stocks gap open higher or lower sometimes they fill sometimes they the gap doesn't fill and for those who might not even be familiar with that terminology the space between where the market closed and the market opened that's considered the gap and the unusual thing about futures to me are the interesting thing is that they almost always fill the gap I'm not saying they always do but almost always and and what a what a textbook example we close Friday at 9 11 and a quarter and the session high 9 11 and a quarter as it was walking sideways last night I'm, 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 I was asking myself could this be is it possible that this time we won't see the gap close but to the tick now remember it's not the wick down here it's just the bottom of the body because that's where that <clears throat> time period closed you find that interesting Michael at all I do find that interesting it is very interesting almost always is so is it is it a high enough percentage a high enough probability that a person could maybe adapt that as one of their market truths yeah I think so as long as you keep that almost always in there I mean you'd be almost hard, hard pressed to find to find one I think that didn't close but I'm gonna stick with the almost always <clears throat> yeah because nothing is always yeah and so as as price sold off enough I mean you could have said at some point you know I just I want to be long up to you know maybe you take this side and uh, so that it trades through and fills you and I almost put that out and I thought you know because it, it really did it somehow had a feeling like oh it's an uphill climb and I don't know that it can do it uh, plus you had this here which would be well if you draw there and if you draw here hmm. oh what other thing <clears throat> I'll show you real quick is John's gonna be here just a second. He said, uh, "Um, he's here. He's here. I can oh, open he his mic." Okay. All right. So, yep. on there he goes. Mic is open. Okay. Hey, John. Welcome to the show. Hello. Well, how was your weekend? Uh, not too bad, thanks. Uh, we had a fantastic Grand Prix yesterday in Singapore with uh, Lewis. So, um, winning, winning uh, hands down. <clears throat> probably almost led from start to finish but it's kind of interesting that um, you know they, they in every race they have the fastest car and the fastest lap and all this kind of thing mm -hmm. and uh, even though he won uh, and, and by the way he won by you know it was nine seconds eight or nine seconds ahead of the next car and 
40 seconds ahead of that so he was almost a minute ahead of his uh, you know main, main rival Sebastian Vettel uh, who's challenging him for the championship <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> the uh, but he, you know he, it, it's interesting the Mercedes might not have actually the fastest car even though they keep winning the reason they keep winning is because he's he's a better driver than, than anybody else plain and simple um, you, you know sometimes uh, what, do you McLaren, think defines, what do you think defines a better driver in that kind of a situation is it stamina is it maneuvering uh, no it's it's smarts it's smarts and it's the ability to you know it's just a, a, it's an ability to get around the track and you know less track than anybody else and more consistently fast than anybody else i mean the, the thing about you know when you when you race in sailing in, in, in international sailing races mm -hmm. you know it's extremely competitive and and all the boats are the same and they start at the same time on the starting line or close to, to the same time right. and yet you know by the end of the race they're separated by by you know sometimes a mile or more right. it's like the america's cup you know and you look at the other i mean the amazing thing is you have these world around the world races i mean they're they're becoming so competitive now that after you know 80 days or 40 days around the world they're they're within a few boat lengths of each other to the finishing line that, that's really amazing but but you know in like in the racing it's just like nascar you know why does i mean i think nascar is is a more of a survival type thing in other words just getting out not being in crashes and managing to avoid uh, these kinds of things and 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 some consistency in Ma Ma nascar is much more important than formula one formula one i mean look the engineering team and the and the performance of the car and the reliability of the car is is pretty much everything you know and, and obviously the speed as well but i mean I think for Ferrari's got a faster car these days. I mean, they showed that a few races ago when, when they just you know when when past him as if he wasn't there. I mean, the way they've been able to pull back into the race and keep ahead is 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 really amazing. So it's it's quite exciting to see that. But I think yesterday, you know, McLaren, which can't get out of its own way at the moment. I mean, McLaren used to be winning. Used, they used to be winning all the time, and they they're just they can't they can't get their act together recently and Williams you know a long time ago Williams was a dominant player and they they're in the they're they're in the last two places it's, it's fascinating the way these fortunes um, you know ebb and flow I mean when Mercedes came on the scene at the you know about a decade ago um, they bought Schumacher back in you know and this is the most successful race driver of all time until Hamilton showed up um, the you know Mercedes couldn't get good couldn't get it couldn't make it I mean they just weren't they didn't win any races they didn't win a race they, they didn't win a race for 50 years until Hamilton came on the scene and now they're they're so dominant that it's amazing so, um, so it's, it's more than just horsepower it's 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 more than the ability to to, it, yeah, it's very much a, like playing chess, right? The strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The strategy is a strategy. You know, a lot of things can go wrong. The pitting and all that. You know, when they go in the pits and oh, right, right. the timing. You know, there's a lot to it. But it's fascinating. You know, you, when you think about. It. But I, I, that that was the thing that surprised me yesterday. You think just because Hamilton's winning the race, he's automatically the fastest lap. Now he has been the fastest lap at times, and he's and he's broken a few records recently. But you know, in yesterday's race, he was not the fastest lap. So what does that tell you? They're, they're faster cars. <coughs> but it's the, you know, the ability to drive around that circuit and 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 actually increase your lead uh, by so much is, is, is remarkable. You know, it's, it's amazing. The pit stops it's, themselves, um, <coughs> I know they refuel, they change tires. So well, that's the other amazing, do you know how long they actually, it's two sec. they got it down to two seconds now. Two right. seconds. Yeah. Two seconds. And, and what all do they do in two seconds? They change the wheels and uh, change the tires and that's it. Uh, and I think refuel and that's it in two seconds. Why do they have to, why do, why do they need new tires? Because the tires can only, you know, most most races are about fifty or sixty laps, and uh, the the 
the the initial the initial tires can only last about 25 laps 25 to 30 laps now occasionally they can go a bit better you know with weather conditions and things like that uh, sometimes they have to change twice in a race but uh, and, and and the kind of tires they they ride on you know soft or hard can can actually that 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 can give you an edge as well you know Sometimes, you know, like when the weather is changing, they have to change to tires with more grip. And that can be, uh, that can be a big determinant uh, of, of success. You know, if you've got the wrong tires on, you can, you can, you can fall behind pretty quickly. Interesting. I don't see how, I mean, Two seconds. That's just phenomenal. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. change it, it really is. That, I mean, tires I, in two seconds. It, exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. Two, uh, I think that if two seconds about the fastest one ever. Yesterday it was, I think the fastest was 2.2 .2 seconds, 2.3, something like that. But m most of the time these days, it's around that, it's around that uh, sort of amount. Some, there might be some breaking news because the market just suddenly started tanking here. Uh, and the VIX is finally are getting some traction. Uh, this could be the look uh, today. You know, Amazon. Remember, we said last week we thought this week would be a down week, and uh, Amazon's trend line is broken or it's in the process of breaking. It's a very dangerous uh, setup because it's, we've had a very defined uptrend in, in in Amazon, and it's breaking down today, down about fifty dollars earlier on, and. Um, Apple as well uh, is uh, uh, so, and and most of the stocks are starting to look like there's a top in in, in on them. So the thing about Amazon, because it could break really hard, because if Trump puts these tariffs on, it's going to affect Amazon because so much of his stuff comes from China. Obviously, the price is going to go up, and uh, you know that's that's going to have an impact on Amazon, uh, just like we were talking about. Um, and it's probably going to have an impact on Apple too. So it could be the beginning of, uh, you know, a, a protracted uh, sort of a downtrend here, especially now that the VIX, you know, until this VIX gets some fear factor into it and starts getting getting stronger, the, the markets, and I think they've been manipulating the VIX downwards to try and hold the market up, but that may be, uh, that may be over now. <clears throat> so today we're down uh, 65 already on the NASDAQ. Dow and, and the rest of the markets are starting to give it up now. So um, it's and like, look at FedEx, FedEx this morning, you know, FedEx looks like it was going to go to the moon this morning. It's and it's already uh, FDX. FDX. And it's, and it's, and it's already reversed. And it's uh, kind of, look at that. See that? It's looking mm -hmm. kind of, uh, this, is a, this is a 30 minute chart. Right, right. It's it's on a kind of a daily reversal already. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that puts tops in. And the same with Boeing. You know, Boeing looked like it was going to do better as well, and it's coming off. The banks, um, you know, the, the other thing that the, the bonds got down to 141 this morning, and <clears throat> they are rallying up a bit right now. But if, uh, you know, if, if the... Um, if we hold here and start going back up, uh, then then uh, it, it's uh, you know they're probably going to save the day. So we are still at that sort of critical point whether we're going to do it or not. The big big news of the day is the dollar the dollar has broken down uh, to the levels we were looking for last week. Um, it's I think it's about ninety four and a half on the September now. 94 on the December and and that's if it starts breaking 94 going to 93 we could lose 93 very quick last week Joe Dalio came out and said he could easily see we think the dollar is going to go down 50 percent he said 30 percent um you know 30 percent lower dollar would be a big deal uh you know you could have a 30 percent higher stock market uh, you know all these gold bulls on these websites they keep saying the world's going to end and that's what's going to make gold go up but uh, they don't understand that if the dollar goes down you know stocks are probably going to go higher uh, just like they do in Argentina or Venezuela you know when the currency goes down um, it's it's actually good for the US bring it getting some inflation into the system at this point 
is not a bad thing. You know, it's actually helpful to growth. A um, couple of things. Some, of, by the way, some of the re the retail sales numbers on Friday were not very good. They're actually a miss, which may be another factor help hurting Amazon today, <clears throat> and, and probably the retailers. The um, other than that, most of the, of the statistics look fantastic. Um, you know, this this growth, it's going to be interesting to see what the next GDP revision is going to be like and what the uh, third quarter GDP is likely to come in at when it, when when we get there. Uh, might be a, might be a, quite a bump, especially if the GDP, if the inflation is higher. Um, you know, median median income hitting all all time highs. It's all very very good news. It's it's we've never had we've never had this much good news coming out of the, as as we've had recently. It's really unprecedented. So it's pretty hard for the market to break too much with this with this incredible good news uh, out there. Things would have to get something would have to turn very bad, I think, to really tank the market at this point. It's just you know because. You know the, the the companies are generating some record profits, and you know there's probably more more cash uh, sitting in bank accounts today than ever, um, and uh, and there's more profits being made. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 really the, the perfect scenario. And, and yet, there's never been more division. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the sad part of the thing. So maybe um, the civil I mean, war. All, I don't know, but. Uh... Well, all this nonsense that they keep, you know, now they've got this Kavanaugh thing. I mean, this is all these people do. They just set people up all the time, just like they set up Papadopoulos and, and all these people. The whole collusion thing, I mean, it's it's all coming out now, and it's it's going to lead back to Obama eventually, uh, because the truth's going to come out sooner or later. I mean, some of these FBI agents, somebody's going to, look, maybe there's a reason why Trump hasn't, declassified everything yet maybe he's planning to do that just before the election uh, to really you know show what really happened the all the all the skullduggery that went on but it's obvious that this went on at a very high level and it was a highly orchestrated event to to to, to try and destroy him and and um, the I mean, poor old Manafort. I mean, he's had to fork out 50, 40. I mean, they said he was broke recently. He's just made a deal to give up about forty-six million dollars or something. So he's not—he's not that stupid. He didn't blow all his money by the by the looks of it. But um, he's yeah. unfortunately going to have to give give a lot of it back to the government. <clears throat> no, um, he's he he's agreed to uh, turn state's evidence or cooperate. Well, they don't know they don't know the full story yet on that. Uh, you know, he's facing it's, eighty years. What, what what exactly are the charges against him? Oh, uh, it's all well, look. It's he. You know, he obviously did some things uh, regarding circumventing taxes and things, not reporting stuff that probably were were criminal, and um, you know, he got caught. Uh, but uh, he he. Uh, um, I think you know some of these some of these things could have you know were kind of borderline. I mean, really, everybody says, "Oh, Mueller's done such a good job." You know, half the people who being charged are that's. I mean, they're probably just names out of a phone out of the Russian phone book. You know, uh, literally. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, most of it, and, and when you take that out, that fact that factor out of it, then uh, you know they really didn't get much. From, for all the for all the nonsense that's gone on, so um, and and you know the other thing is I mean when would they ever learn? Uh, the Trump's approval rating today is forty nine percent. You know there's that hidden benefit in there. By the way, it isn't factoring in the African American gains. That could be a significant factor in the elections. Um, the 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 but he is at forty nine percent today now. Just on CNN, the, the, 
the worst rated show out there. You know, they've lost 36% viewership from last year. You, you know, that's the definition of, in, of insanity. You know, you keep doing the same thing, hoping you're going to get a different result and then it gets worse. Uh, so maybe they're going to modif modify their, their, uh, their reportings one of these days, start become, becoming less, less fake news. But anyway, the, <clears throat> the, uh, um, the, the ratings, you know, the, the forty nine percent. Look, one thing that uh, Rasmussen has is consistency. Four elections, they've nailed it. In the last four elections, they're the authority on polls, and yet they keep putting out the CNN poll, which is ten points lower. And they keep saying his poll numbers going down. They can say that till kingdom come. But the fact of the matter is the Rasmussen poll always gets it right. And if you don't follow the Rasmussen poll, you're either got your head in the sand or you don't understand what's going on, period. Yeah, because what, what do you think the, the, them... the, the Rasmussen poll, well, it's, you're going to ask the question, I can answer it for okay. you. It's an impartial phone, a call, uh, sorry, it's an impartial phone because it doesn't involve humans. I mean, it involves the human that's answering, right? But it doesn't have a, another party who's interpreting those remarks, you know, and bending them or shaping them according to their own bias. That's why all these other uh, polls are, are uh, tend to be flawed. It's it's a kind of it's one of these robot things, you know. It's a recorded message, so they just ask, get asked the questions, and they answer them, and that's how they get their numbers. So it it, yeah. it removes it removes that element from it. But look, you, you can't fault it. It's been deadly accurate. You know the Rasmussen poll. If you remember, you and I were talking about it the week before the election. It it you know Trump started pulling ahead in the last few days, and uh, and he had that hidden ten percent. Remember when I heard that ten percent of the voters out there were undecided, but they were kind of leaning towards Trump. You know that was the clue that he was going to win. Because if 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 Hillary and Trump were neck and neck at that point, and there were and there was ten percent leaning towards Trump, it looked pretty good for him. And and the thing is, it, if you remember, the Los Angeles Times, the IBD, and the Rasmussen, all three of those look. It's like the set, the twenty analysts in the room. They were the three analysts who were right, and the other seventeen were wrong, plain and simple. So it's. It's an encourage the 49 today, and it's by the way the disapproval is down to 50. That's a that's he's had a hard time with that. He's only been under 50 a few times, but if he can get the disapproval under 50, that would be an accomplishment. And actually, it kind of looks like his, it might his his numbers might break out. Uh, and and actually, I think if um, if the Mueller investigation was terminated, I think he'd probably add another five or ten points in to his popularity. Well, and the outcome of these uh, polls have so much to do with the people who are being polled. You know, the the segment of society that they choose to to ask. The well, they, they they try. I guess they try to do them randomly. I don't know how they do that, but they they, they try to do it. You know, well, pretty. I, yeah, that's uh, like if you were if you were taking a a poll, do you think uh, gambling should be legalized in your state? Well, if you put the people with the clipboards uh, out in front of a strip club and another group of people out in front of a church, you know, and they're both asking the same question, I think you're going to get, you know, very different results uh, in the poll, obviously. Yeah, sure, sure. But so, so supposedly this random would cross all political barriers, socioeconomic uh, divides, all of that, and just a truly random sampling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, you can, you can never, you can never get the perfect poll, but the Rasmussen is about the closest thing to a perfect poll and you can ignore it at your own cost. You know, it's just, it, it, they, they got that. They've got the, they've got, you know, they do it right. They've done it right before and they're using the same formula to try and get it right every day. And, uh, it, I was a little bit surprised this morning, actually, that the numbers were as good as they were, because you know he's he's slumped down 
to 45 a few times in the last month, but he's bounced back each time, which is kind of remarkable, really, given everything that's going on. Um, you know, he did a pretty good job, uh, you know, uh, doing the, uh, on the website with all this hurry, you know, becoming the sort of center for hurricane to go, the go-to place for hurric for hurricane advice. I thought that was kind of innovative. Uh, and, I didn't, um, what site is that? Uh, Trump's website, you know, Trump's Twitter. Um, Twitter, okay. It was loaded, loaded with everything, you know, keeping everybody up to date on the hurricane. I mean, no president's ever done that before. Um, and he's pretty clever at doing things like that. So um, no, no president <clears throat> has ever uh, communicated with the American people. In, in, exactly. In the no, no. The, the, yeah, and and uh, we, you know, you listen, the good or the bad, you're getting the full story and all this nonsense about the White House, you know, the chaos and all that sort of stuff. It's just ridiculous. I mean, listen, Trump is a hundred. No, none of the people who are yelling at Trump every day and tearing him, trying to tear him down. They haven't a thousandth, most of them don't even have a thousandth of his wealth or a hundredth of his wealth and, and most of them aren't anything like this. This guy, what he's done in his life is, is I mean, it's, it's everybody else, it's like 10 lifetimes of what this guy's done in one lifetime. Um, he's, he's an incredible guy. I mean, look, he's got his faults, uh, but, uh, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, his, I mean, he's, to say that he's, you know, all these things they keep accusing him of, losing it and all this sort of thing. It's so so ridiculous because when you look at everything he's done, I mean, he's meticulous in just every area of operation of his company. I mean, his hotels, I mean, they're top notch. I mean, he, right down to the last detail, uh, you know, he's got a very high reputation in that regard. Uh, and, you know, and it's the same with his golf, golf, in his golf, I mean, he's got trophy, trophy resorts all over the world, trophy building. He owns some of the some of the greatest buildings in the world, and you know, to do what he did at such a young age and put a huge, you know, put the Trump Tower up in Manhattan uh, was a, was an incredible accomplishment when you think of it. I mean, it's his legacy. You know, he he had this like his bedrock, if you like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this whole thing about him, you know. Uh, the, the whole Mad Hatter thing that, that, that <laughs> seems to be following him. I mean, do you think? Do you believe there's any basis to it? I mean, I, a little bit because you know I think he's got a pretty look. He's got a short attention span in the sense he you know he, look he has to suffer a lot of fools every day. Remember? Oh yeah. And uh, he he you know a lot of these guys. I mean, listen, you see some of the half of these talking heads on TV. Uh, you know, I can't even imagine how they even come out with some of the stuff they come up with. It's just unbelievable. And most of them are Democrats. Uh, and and, and they, they're just hard to listen to. And you can you kind of sort of scratch your head and say, you know, how could, and, and yet they get away with it. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, the uh, There was something else I was going to mention today that's kind of uh, big league, but um, uh, I mean, the, the you know the whole the whole tariff thing, even though it's kind of uh, worsening in a, in, a, in a sense with China, it's probably going to end pretty well, <clears throat> and uh, it's 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 as we said on Friday or Thursday, you know, how can you lose when if Trump can cut that deficit and. He looks like he's going to be able to do it. Um, that's that's a big win for for, the, for America. And, oh, that's another thing that happened today. That's what I was going to think. The oil, the U.S. became the largest oil producer this year in the, in the world. <laughs> yeah, with Canada and Mexico as a NAFTA producer, if you like, that's been the biggest producer forever because they, they do about 18 million barrels a day. But the most interesting thing, and you heard it here first on this show, I think as long ago as a couple of years ago, we said by 2020, the world would be using more than 100 million barrels a day. Guess what? It's going to happen by the end of this year. We're going to, we're going to, the world will be using, in spite of all the electric cars and everything, we're going to be using more than 100 million barrels of oil per day before the year is out. That's going to create an incredibly tight market. And 
if anything goes wrong with supply under those conditions, we're definitely going to pop pretty quickly uh, to new highs in, in the in the oil. We're not there yet. We're coming actually. We're coming down today, in spite of the fact that I think we had an eight million barrel drawdown last week. Um, but seventy now is a pretty key number. If we start going back above seventy. Uh, you know, it, it's quite possible. Look, as it, we, this is normally a soft period in the oil market in the fall. Could still be, might be one more, you know, run down into the mid 60s, perhaps, or even the low 60s. Could be that could turn out to be a fantastic buying opportunity because the, the market's likely to tighten. You know, in fact, a lot of these uh, Arabian, some of the Saudi Arabian guys <coughs> have. Um, just a minute. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> All right, last night on the S&P 500 E-mini futures, said to consider selling at 28.99, which we came within a tick of right here, 28.99. Point two five. One more tick, it would have been one of those on the nose <clears throat> type of situations. Uh, real quick, since it is a Monday, let's reflect back real quick while John's on the phone. You still on the phone, John? Okay. Let's take a look at. We'll go through the alerts in just a second. Figure out how to get rid of this. There we go. Mm. Hmm. As much as I enjoy uh, the telegram, as I've mentioned, I guess that's it seems like there should be a better way but anyway so we're now in a week five post beta my how time does fly so the raw data dump from last week week number four post beta we had uh total new alerts of 52 we had three that carried over from the previous week 33 reached the full target nine reached the first target minimum or 60 percent of the only target 16 no triggers uh seven stop outs uh four remained open at the end of the week uh, one was voided one was a cancel and a replace which left us with a uh, probability factor of 85 so quite a high percent quite a high percentage yeah Good god job. god's really blessed us and so uh yeah yeah no i'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm quite happy so yeah yeah as I was saying a lot of these some recently I've noticed that some of these Saudi princes and things have come on and said that the oil market's getting very unstable like in the sense that it could uh, it could suddenly pop you know Trump released um, 11 million barrels maybe more of the strategic petroleum reserve I think if you hadn't done that, we'd probably be higher today, quite a, quite a bit higher, actually. <clears throat> so um, the, but it becomes a kind of a two-edged sword to release any more from that reserve because the whole idea is if we do have a, a major out, outage, it could keep the country going. And it, the, the world is more vulnerable to some kind of, you know, if something happens in the Persian Gulf, with the Iranians, or if there's an out, outage, uh, you know, Venezuela, Libya, <coughs> Nigeria, these these weak spots, they're they're they can't just flick, click their fingers and turn them on overnight. Saudi is potentially maxed out. Russia is potentially maxed out, and the hidden and don't forget, you know, here we are at a hundred million. We're we're getting up towards a hundred million barrels a, a day, and 
it's a really big deal to find 100 million barrels every day and sh and create 100 million barrels and ship it. It's a big deal. I mean, it's an incredible accomplishment when you think of it. And it's pretty tight chain, supply chain, that the slightest thing could, could upset. You know, it's just like a hurricane. You know, if, we, if you take five or 10 million barrels off for a few days, that can definitely, uh, you know, create some restrictions, some constrictions. So, the the remember that a hundred million barrels a day really means one hundred and five million barrels a day because you got to find five million barrels per day of new discoveries to come online every year, and the and the number of discoveries have gone down, and the time frame, the time lag to get them online has gone up, and it's become more a lot more expensive. Remember. The, you know, there was a somebody came out with a study that if Mexico wanted to increase its output by a bit by a million barrels a year, could cost them six hundred billion dollars. It's it's almost uneconomic. Sorry, hang on. All right, so here comes the S and P now. <clears throat> This was not only a a trade alert, but if we roll back into Friday, can we do that? Now, this is an interesting one on silver last week. We uh oh oh there we go. Hey, it blew up this time. All right. So, silver last week, we had said to consider something 1415. It came, this is number 301. Hit it right on the nose, bounced, came back, did exactly what we thought was going to happen, unfortunately. And it dropped all the way to 1396. So, for the record, we have to count that as a stop out. And in actuality, I mean, it did do. So anyway, I was just filling yeah, the, the time. The, the, metal, the metals, <laughs> the metals are looking uh, more and more positive here. You know, they kind of looked a little bit dicey on Friday, but the fact that they turned around in midair and just came up back up out of nowhere, thanks to the dollar overnight, <coughs> which is just around ninety-four right now, it's just trying to bounce off the ninety-four. If it breaks ninety-four. It, uh, it kind of looks like the, the lows are in on the currencies and the, and the highs are in on the dollar. Okay, tell so, me which one you're just referring to at 94? What was that? The dollar, the dollar index. Um, yeah, I yeah. seem to have difficulty finding and, just you know, the dollar. Just the dollar. Yeah, what I was there. thinking was that, you, would, you know, we're a week away from the Fed. It's possible there's one, and it could be happening before our eyes right now. That, you know, after being up again this morning, the golds come back a bit. <coughs> you know, it's gone from about nine dollars higher to five, so it could come down one more time and make one more test, and possibly put a better bottom in, and then maybe the Fed news, Fed raises gets gets the gold gold market and the the dollar down, gold up, silver up, and um, Oh, the other thing is, look, the these um, commercials who are people like jewelers, everybody who buys gold, you know, for profit to, to sell it for profit, you know, if they're a hundred percent long the the market in a way that they've never been more long gold or silver ever in history, what does that tell you? It tells you, and they, these guys are never wrong, or almost never wrong. They, they are, uh, you know, it's interesting because 2016, when we made the bottom, remember in early 2016, everybody thought Hillary was going to win. Mm -hmm. So that, so gold was going to be a much higher deal because generally when the Democrats win, gold goes through the roof. And <clears throat> the... Really? Yeah. I had not pieced those together. Well, the interesting takeaway is that in 2016, after the biggest move up in 30 years, 
at that time more uh more people own gold than ever before you know more commercials own gold than ever before uh and the hedge funds own gold you know everybody owned more gold than ever before and then of course when trump won it, it sort of come back came back and but now that's gone up again to an all-time record high so and the hedge funds and the speculators are up you know are more short than ever before it is absolutely a kind of a repeat of 20 of the stock market from 2009, 20, 2009 to 2011. It's this thing that's hard to get your head around. How can the stock market be more short in 2011 when we were two years higher than where we were in 2009? It's hard to, it's hard to fathom, but that's what happened. And that's kind of what we're, where we are on the gold today. Um, so, it, it, you know, we're sort of an, in an identical position to where we are, where we were between about December the 29th of 2015 and February 15th or mid 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 February, early to mid February of 2016, during which time the gold market was bottoming, uh, prior to a meteoric liftoff. Um, you know, something like this could, I mean, it could be the next Fed. Uh, it could be the next Fed hike could kick it off something just could come out of nowhere and kick this gold off uh, in a very big way uh, just out of just out of the blue so i think you've just got to be ready for that uh when, when it comes hmm. interesting i'm looking here at this a dollar chart that you were speaking about earlier um, what's uh yeah, actually, getting a little bit of. Uh, if you go to the, is that the December? Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. It is. Something wrong with that. It's not at ninety four. Ninety. I got ninety four point five zero five. No, it's not. It's not. It's not ninety four point five right now. It's that's oh, no, an end that's, of. That's that's the high of the day. Uh, yeah. See, we're, we're oh, actually end of day. This is end of yeah, day we're, data. We're, we're actually down at ninety four. So yeah. look, imagine what that chart looks like. It's about to break ninety four, and that's a, that's a really big deal. Hmm. I'm curious why I'm only getting in. You don't have any intraday on that one, no? Well, I no, should, you, you know, I absolutely should. Um, let me try. Let's see. It, it sh it's not showing. Yeah, I see that. Let me see here. Okay. Let me try. There's current, continuous, current. Yeah, try that, try, that, try that one. Uh, I think. Yeah, that's giving me end of day. That's the same. Now, yeah, yeah. let's see if I go. Uh, now, see, that's off my site. Uh, so let me let me try it on their site. And I, I think that's going to bring back the same. Uh, yeah. Only daily, weekly, monthly intervals are supported. You'll automatically be switched. Intraday. Intervals are not avail intraday intervals are not available because of exchange policies. Well, I know that on <clears throat> my DT Pro platform, I used to be able to get uh, the U.S. dollar. It was D DM or DX uh, dot M. I, I'm trying to remember. Anyone, any audience uh, using DT Pro? What do you what do you use for the U.S. dollar? Did we somehow did we lose that? Uh, and I've tried looking it up, and I I get a symbol, but I don't get. Uh, put put that Russell on a daily. Can you put that on a, on oh, a daily? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, that's this. Let me switch it out to the Z first. RT Z RTY. For those that don't know, the Russell 2000 is the small cap index. And you say daily? Yeah. There we go. All right. There you go. Yeah, you see, I tell you what, that's a kind of a very dangerous looking chart now, this chart. Um, in, you in know, we, we, well, we've negated everything since the middle of August. So this, this, this whole, we, it's almost like we've made a monthly island top here. 
that if it gaps down tomorrow, it could could be could be pretty bad. You know, it could it could it could potentially come back to about sixteen eighty. Okay, and then that would be a three wave correction if it held and started going back up. Other or the, or it could break down much more substantially. <clears throat> and I, I think you have to agree that today's actions not particularly constructive right now. Yeah. Now just just doing some simple fibs from this low July thirty first up to the most recent high on oh September fourth. We still haven't hit a 50% retracement, but if, when we do hit the 50, that's going to bring us back below these lows, and so that's that's going to create added pressure. And yeah. Um, By the way, that tool ray that I talked about last week, mm -hmm. uh, it uh, it went up again. It went down to 99, 98, 90, 97, 8, 50, 97, 50. It managed to get itself back up to 126 this morning. Or yeah, around lunchtime, and we sold it at 124, and and that's a short for us. We just broke 117, so that's a really uh, we've nailed this thing up and down here in the last few days very well, uh, and I think this is the beginning of the end for Tilray. So okay, on the daily, this is a little double top here. <clears throat> I guess that would be Thursday and today. Can you put a 30 minute up? Sure. Uh huh. There we go. Yeah, that's a, a big reversal there. See that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking about this earlier about futures almost always closing the gap, and we hardly ever see a gap except maybe in earnings and sometimes on a on a Sunday night when Globex has actually been closed for a day. And last night was I, I actually almost had myself convinced that last night was gonna be the one time that it didn't reach back up and, and close that gap. But in fact, it did, as I slept, it reached up and uh, to the tick, to the absolute tick. What, what do you think? What is that, John? What, 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 what creates? Now, I got Tilray here. And of course, as I told everyone earlier, you know, gaps with stocks are pretty commonplace. It happens all the time. Sometimes they fill. Sometimes the gap doesn't fill. But on this, uh, this S&P last night... I mean, do, do you have 10 minutes on your chart? Uh -huh. Do you have 10 minutes? I do. I do. Put Tilray Tilray on the 10 minute. You, see, you see that? Just it, it comes right back up to the absolute, to the tick. Yeah, it's a kind of amazing. It's a, it's a, yeah. It's, I don't know anything else to call it other than that. I mean, I got no other explanation for it, frankly. Um, okay, Tilray on a 10 minute, sure. <clears throat> oh, how about 15? 15 will do. Okay. Or even five, really. Five. Or just look at it on a five. Okay, see what that five. looks like. Okay. Yeah. See, it sort of looked like it was. It went up and made almost an exact double top. So, I mean, it's a very, very strong stock. So you have to be really careful. You, trying do you to short consider it, that a bearish engulfing? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I know we talked about this the other day. Because there's the high and there's the low. Some people, you know, oh, you can't count the wick. Well, well, I don't know. Price went there. Why can't you? So. What? Oh, the Cutlo just came out and says he doesn't think tax reform 2.0 will happen before the mid midterms. So that's um, weighing heavy. Yeah. By the way, I don't know whether you saw this week yesterday. I did not. Uh, but you know that Rebecca Jarvis. You know she used to be on the. She almost won the Apprentice one time. <clears throat> no, and, I'm not familiar with that. And she ended up. She got, I mean, she's had a meteoric career. She's kind of like the financial person for ABC News now. She's really, uh, really come into her own. And she really asked them. She had an interview with Jamie Diamond. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a really excellent interview. She really asked some very good questions and uh, was very much in control. And uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a pleasure to see her do so well, you know. She's, what about him? Uh, she, what, what did he have to say for himself? Well, you know, I, I thought the best thing was what Trump put on the, his Twitter a couple of days ago, where he showed clips of all the great, <laughs> all, the, all the praise that Jamie Dimon's been heaping on him for the economy, <laughs> because he never used to say that under Obama, or pretty rarely, 
you know. And it's, remember, he was getting beaten up with fines and, and you know, they ripped him off for about $15 billion. Uh, and oh, he, he pays billions a year in fines. It's just that yeah. for him, it's a cost of doing business. Yeah. And anyway, but he's he had all these, incre you know, great. I mean, look, as somebody said, the minute that Trump was elected, you know, cons business confidence went through the roof. I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, this we've never had anything like this, this trillion, 10 trillion, 15 trillion, it's about 15 trillion now of wealth that's been created since the election. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's, un it's unprecedented. And it's filtered down to the whole world because the global, the, 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 glo the world, the, the total gains worldwide are, are more than 30 trillion now. It's a really big number. So uh, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Um, and uh, um, at least it might be, it might be a little bit less for the rest of the world. It might be 20, 20, 20, and somewhere in the 20s because at, at one stage when every, all the markets were at the highs in January, I think the world was, was somewhere equal to the US or a bit, bit above, but you know, this is, uh, I mean, what has actually happened in the U.S. in such, it's, it's, it's just why it makes that perfect. You know, are you better off than you were two years ago? No president's really been able to come out and ask that question before Trump. You know, because the, nobody ever noticed the difference in two, you know, previously there was never a difference. <clears throat> Almost every president who's come into office over the last <coughs> you know, 30 years has had a very hard time in the first couple of years. Often the market's been down and uh, things have been pretty grim. So this is a very different first two years of, uh, of an administration. There's almost no precedent. No, I agree. I, I, we've, we've not seen uh, anything like this. Um... Yeah. So, well, listen. Mm, thanks very much tariffs, for the uh, two, two more more tariffs coming. Two hundred billion in Chinese goods. The notion that China's economy is about to topple over, and all the U.S. needs to do is give it a kick, and they'll be begging for mercy. Is well, it probably will be. It probably will be. Well, they say uh, uh, they're not going to take it lying down. They're going to fight back. Well, you know, look. If you, there was an article, I wanted to read it on this show. Actually, that. The, um, you know, this is when when every when when the U.S. was quaking in its boots <laughs> over Japan back in 1989. Uh, Japan's market was 40,000, and they seemed invincible. Remember, at that time, the top five banks in the world were Japanese. Came out of nowhere, and it's it's a little bit like that today with China. You know, where all of a sudden the Chinese banks every, they're almost exactly where Japan was in 1989 and they're kind of uh, toppling you know they're they're they really are look the chinese market is pretty shaky it's uh, uh you know when it peaked a few years it's peaked twice you know peaked in, in the early part of the decade peaked in 2008 remember too <clears throat> with the olympics and it sort of had a triple top and this third top you know, which happened at the beginning of the year is it's come off pretty sharply and it's a really bad thing. I mean, you know, it, it means that I think that's down 20 percent or 20 or 30 percent on the year. That means mo most people in China are 20 or 30 percent weak, you know, less rich. The UN's tanked as well. So the the you know, there's a fair amount of economic gloom over there. And China's very vulnerable because they've got, you know, potential, everything in China is to the power of 10 or more or, or 100. And, you know, it's not 10 million people out of work. It's 100 million, 200 million people out of work. It's, it's a really big deal. And if you have a riot or a revolution, you know, that could bring the whole thing, the whole, whole thing could come, come apart. So, um, it's it's the the one the biggest uh, black swan, if you like, that people may not expect is try China potentially dragging the world economy down. So right. you need to get that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thanks. Well, John, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. Okay.
Okay, S and P taking a little bit of a dip here. Uh, let's go look at the Dow. See what's going on there. Again, these are zones from last week. If you have any questions, get them in the chat box. And we're going to go to our good word for the day here uh, in just a bit. Just want to move through a couple of these. I'll take a look and see where we are. All right. First thing we should do is get in place a little marker. Okay. All right. 16th. So that right there, that opening candle, that's the Dow. Last night, Globex open. Starting the week out. Not where the line is. That's the close on Friday. This is the close last, or the open, sorry, last night. <clears throat> on the concierge trade alerts, go the lack of follow-through incredible 26 to 20 it was up enough just to get us out of harm's way get us out of the out of the away from the riffraff and we two points which if you trigger at 26 to 20 guess what that's the truth about trading Six to twenty, <clears throat> and you're looking at us about and that is the truth about trading. Now, email also said if the opportunity presents to consider selling. 26 100 maybe the Dow can redeem itself there on the Russell I uh, consider being long uh, 1731 did not come into play and if the opportunity presents to consider selling 17 13 which did present itself seventeen thirteen and the swing low seventeen oh nine point two if you round it up to ten that gives you three points Three point eight <clears throat> at fifty dollars per point, and then <clears throat> important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So we get back above the trigger. Down we go again. This time we put in a swing low at seventeen oh. So six of one, right? Half a dozen. So now you got 3.9 points times $50 per point. This is the Russell. We are in the December contract. So check all your charts. Check everything. Make sure you are locked and loaded on December because everything going forward. Z contract. Should I air and put out at you? Then let me know oh another issue uh, let me just bring this up now and I really need you guys help because it gets confusing all right I'll just come right out and say it and let me show you where the confusion comes in okay last week we're cooking along things are going good 
So we got 327, alert number 328, 329, 330, 331, everything's looking fine. And then there's 331 again. But that's just the beginning. 332, 333, 334, 335, 336, 337, 338, 340, 341, 42, and from 42, we go to 32. Now, I was trying to focus and highlight on making sure that everybody knew this was, in fact, the, we were now into the December contract. See, with the little stars there by the Z, just to make sure. And, it, and in, in doing that, I managed to do this. So now we go 32, and 33, and 34, and 35, and 36, and 37. And 38 and 39, 40, 41, 42, and we hit the end of the week. Okay. So you see what I'm saying with the duplication of those numbers? So I have to reconcile. So when you guys spot, and I know that you have on many occasions, when you when you spot uh, that there's inconsecutive numbering hey shouldn't this be number so and so or you've got 331 twice or any now some of you may have provided feedback you may have sent me an email or something and i missed it you could have sent a text and i missed it and, and for that i'm sorry but uh, i can't i could i know uh <clears throat> i should be able to count right it's just that there's so much going on and i'm trying to you know watch a number of different things convey whatever it is that, that needs to be conveyed in this instance and well there's there's what ends up happening okay so i'm just i'm asking for your help okay follow uh, it's just like uh on the on the one traded days i send those to michael well i i, I publish them or it's yeah, I publish them, and then he, he double-checks them to make sure that I got all the numbers correct. And 90% of the time, I do, uh, but at 1 out of 10, it, it's important. It makes a difference, and I go and I change it. So, anyway, any help that you guys uh, can provide, much appreciated. All right, so moving on from the Russell, we'll go to Crude. All right. Crude. GCLV. Something. Oh, I see what it is. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't know if I gave you. If you want to grab a screenshot, go ahead. There you go. Got them out at 8 p.m. Eastern last night. Five, four, three, two. One. All right. So last night on crude, consider being long sixty eight fifty. I'm sorry. <laughs> consider selling sixty eight fifty which we haven't triggered yet. On the long side for crude, we said to consider being long 69.35. That's what the email said. Nothing more, nothing less. Just if you get a chance, consider being long 69.35. So here we go, 69, 35. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. 69.35, and we initially put in a swing high at 65. So that's three hundred dollars per contract available. We never get out of the swing high or swing low, of course, because we teach trailing a stop. And if you trail a stop, you'll always leave a little bit on the table. Uh, you're always going to leave a little bit on the table. If there's anything on the table, you're going to leave some of it. It's just the nature of trailing a stop. Now, <clears throat> important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So we do get back below the trigger take another run and that takes us right up to 69 68 so basically uh, that's another $300 per contract available and you are looking at last week's weekly trading zones in fact, let me double check. 68.75. Yes. Oh, and it's worth keeping in mind that last week's highest weekly trading zone on crude was way up here at 71 slash 71.05. Okay. Now, seems like there should have been something in between those two, right? But there wasn't. And so, if this zone from last week holds, how does that compare to this week's zone? Uh, yeah. And in the, it's in the neighborhood. Uh, So we have spiked this area, but if we continue to climb the obstacles, if you look left, you're going to not have an obstacle here at 69.70 and another obstacle that the market put in its own path, 69.90. If we get above this 69.90 area this week, okay, fact do it this way <clears throat> that right there that that has the potential to become possibly trade of the week I don't know that's probably a little grandiose We'll pose the question today and revisit it. And we'll come back and revisit it in a couple days. 70. 70.90. Now that's $900 per contract traded. If the market, in fact, travels from 70 to 70.90, $900 per contract traded. If you're a retail trader, if you're a trader at Goldman Sachs, doesn't matter where you do your trading. Wow. Are you guys seeing this news? Uh, Time Magazine has just been bought for $190 million. Time Magazine, when I was a kid in, in elementary school, I think we had a subscription, each kid had a subscription to Newsweek. 
perhaps. I don't think it was time, but those two always sort of, you know, ran in the same circles. We've seen some of these apps, you know, chat apps to, well, Uber. Uber has, I don't know, $60, 60 billion dollar valuation. A Time Magazine is only worth 190 million. Yeah, I understand. 190 million is a lot of money. And I don't know why, but I would have thought Time Magazine would be worth more. I mean, they maintain a website, so it's not just that, well, you know, magazines are out and the internet's in. I'm sure Time is every bit as active on the internet as they are, as they ever were in print. So, I can't lay it off to that. Gold. All right. Now, just to just to show you. Uh, all right, nice little chart of gold. Okay. Last night, the email said, "Consider being long, twelve oh eight." I didn't have to bring that up, but that's what it said. So I'm going to bring it up. 1208. Swing high. 1209.70. It's $170 per contract. But that's all. know what I'm going to show you, but I'll show you anyway. And see. Right there. CFN Partners running their indicators. <clears throat> Here's your heads up. Blue and climbing. Blue and climbing, a leg, and a retracement, and a leg. Price always reverts to the mean, the mean in this case being the BBC bull bear cross. And all that means is when the red line crosses below, the CFMA1 falls below, we anticipate lower prices. And above, we anticipate higher prices. So, if you said, hmm, well, if they anticipate lower prices, let me be short. Okay. Let me be long. Now, in either one of these scenarios, <clears throat> it's pretty cut and dried. Is it always that simple? Well, I don't know how simple that is. It's certainly not easy, uh, but it's definitely, it's definitely simple. Okay. When price pulled back right here, it wobbled, consolidated, it moved sideways, and then the cross. Every trade setup with us begins with a cross. Sweet a leg and a retracement, a leg and a retracement. Of course, the big question now, what happens? Does it hold and we get another leg, a leg and a retrace, a leg and a retrace and a leg? Or do we pull right through it just as we pulled right through it here. One of the two, one of the two is what's going to happen. There, there's no other option. Okay. Either this holds and we attempt another leg 
or this fails and then we drop until we find support okay where's the last place we found support on this chart right here right there is that magical or special or anything no it's just the last the market tried to go down and it hit a brick wall and as a result it ran up from I don't know 1201 $800 per contract plus this is on a 30 minute chart keep that in mind okay and the only significance in me telling you that it's a 30 minute chart is because I want you to know it's a 30 minute chart if it were an hourly chart we would see similar if it were a five minute chart we would see similar okay obviously you're not going to get your your bullish and bearish cross at the same place but the indicator set works on all time frames volume chart range chart however remember it's the same information what you're doing when you change time frames is you're changing how you display the data that's all you're doing it's the same data but you're changing how it's displayed all right let's make sure that was fresh in everybody's mind on the nq bullish cross we expect higher prices a bearish cross we expect lower prices and that's how that's gone for a long time nothing new there last night's email on the NQ who said to consider selling 7532 And from 7532, the quick at 7532, yeah. We dropped to 7483. Yep. So 7532 minus. Seventy-four eighty-four. That's forty-eight in Q points at twenty dollars a point. It's nine hundred and sixty dollars per contract. Once again, email said to consider selling <clears throat> 7532. Swing low is 7481. 7532 minus 7481. Yes, Mike. Oh, is that you, John? I forgot to close your mic up. I apologize. Let me do that for you real quick. Uh, there we go. Okay. 
I cleared your mic out. I assume that's what you wanted me to do. Just to close your mic, not open it. If you need it open, just send me a message in the chat box and or ding my phone, please. Okay. All right, what do we got left? Uh, bonds? Sure. We already talked about the bonds here. Consider selling 141.15. Swing low. Or 141.07. 8 times 31.25 per tick. 240 bucks per contract. And the email also said if the opportunity presents. It was so far up there, not worth mentioning. <clears throat> and last but not least, on the soybeans, 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 soybeans. Uh, we were looking to get long, up around 83.33. And we said to consider selling in the email, 8.26. So you had to be patient. You had to hang in there. It finally took a drop. 826 to 821.50, so we'll call it 822. So that's a total of four points, $50 per point. $200 per contract available. Walks us through it all. Soybeans, bonds, NQ, gold, crude, the Russell, the Dow, the S and P. Good word for the day. Welcome the change. I'm talking about spare change. The things that are unseen are eternal. Second Corinthians 4.18. Think about it. If you can see it with your eye, it's temporary. If you can't see it with your eye, it's eternal. There is a conundrum. But do any of you guys play the conundrum? Okay. We enjoy the blessings of change, but not the process of change. We're creatures of habit, some of us more than others. We form our habits, and our habits form us. Then we start to see things exclusively from our own perspective. And when that happens, we stagnate. The truth is, without change, there's no growth. When you have the right attitude, every experience, positive and negative, becomes an opportunity for progress. Think about it. Trees need more than sunshine to produce fruit. Rainy seasons are productive seasons too, and they always precede the harvest. You don't have to like rain, you just have to understand its purpose and benefits. The Bible says that every day, the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But to become like Jesus, you must follow wherever He leads. That means following Him through the wilderness of temptation, the pain of rejection, the forfeiting of your reputation, surrendering of your will as well as being ready to go to the place of crucifixion where you die to all forms of self-centered living. Following Jesus may mean being in a different location tomorrow than you are today. Once you grasp this principle, 
you'll stop fearing and resisting the changes taking place in your life and start seeing God at work in them. Paul says this, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Think about it. You can see it. It lives forever. You can put your hand on it. It will be gone. That's a good word for the day. That's going to do it for this Monday. 17th day of September 2018. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with His mercy and with His grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.